representative of the Russian Federation. Madam President, we need to ensure accelerated socioeconomic development of uh, middle-income countries. They represent 70% of the population of the world and o over half of all those living beneath the poverty line. This is a key uh, goal uh, in making uh, progress in implementing the 2030 agenda. We believe that in spite of the significant uh, internal po potential for development in these countries, such problems as high income inequality within countries and inadequate social services, the uh, low level of diversification of economy, all these hinder the, f uh, the further development of this category of countries. For many countries, uh, middle-income countries, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, come as a huge blow. Uh, risk, the risks of uh, debt crises have, uh, have uh, sprung up. There's a drop in manufacturing and trade, and the index of human development has fallen. The what it was very important is to review the uh, vulnerability uh, criteria for countries, uh, middle east, middle income countries. In this context, uh, it's important to mention uh, unilateral uh, coercive measures in tr that are uh, in applied against certain countries uh, that have a very negative impact on the development of these countries and the well-being of uh, our ordinary people. We believe that it's important to take additional measures to strengthen socioeconomic services, uh, also uh, improving measures on macroeconomic and fiscal policies, as well as easing access to long-term private financing and the development of local uh, capital markets. A significant contribution to the development of these countries could be uh, achieved by improving the investment climate. This could be bolstered by the creation of special economic zones uh, um, as governments uh, develop and implement changes to the legislative and regulatory framework. Madam President, an important contribution to overall efforts in ensuring the development and overcoming the consequences of pandemic uh, would be a uh, a close partnership in the framework of South-South and triangular cooperation. Integration processes are becoming more and more important. They not only significantly simplify cooperation in, in, among countries in terms of moving of goods, services, and people, people and capital, but they also contribute to moder modernizing the manufacturing and technological basis, introducing best practices in the area of governance and uh, in infrastructure. In this context, we'd like to share with you the experience of the Russian Federation in uh, the area of strengthening regional integration. We have had very positive co uh, experience cooperating with our closest neighbors in the framework of the Eurasian Economic uh, Union. The, the member states of this union have gone well beyond simply creating a customs union. Currently, Policy is being implemented to uh, to create a true, a fully fledged common market and economic union. It's expected that the measures that are being implemented, uh, which will be supranational in character, should lead to an enhancing availability of goods and services and expanding consumer markets, employment, uh, income, and purchasing power. I think it's uh, it's impossible to overestimate the role of the Eurasian Economic Union in overcoming COVID-19. Uh, the adoption of balanced measures, including creation of green corridors to ensure the safe and smooth delivery of cr cross-border delivery among the countries of the Union of important medical goods, also providing mutual assistance in acquiring the means for a laboratory diagnosis of a coronavirus, vaccination, and introducing of digital technologies that make it possible for individuals to seamlessly move around within the union. All this has made it possible to maintain economic stability and avoid the most critical problems. Madam President, it's important to mention that uh, successful middle-income countries uh, 
are important and reliable partners in cooperating, uh, uh, in, in contributing to international development. They ha are making significant contribution to global efforts in, in, in achieving SDGs, uh, helping the most needed uh, countries. In this connection, it's important that the socio-economic and humanitarian needs of these countries continue to be at the center of our attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We have heard the last speaker in the plenary segment. Members are reminded that the high-level dialogue desertification, land degradation and drought will begin immediately following this meeting. The high-level